My name is Ed Russell. I'm an associate professor of science, technology, and society at the University of Virginia. And this year I'm a Rachel Carson Fellow here in Munich. I've been working on neurohistory here in Munich. Neurohistory is a brand new area of history in which historians are looking at the field of neuroscience, engaging the literature and the scientists of that field, and seeing how ideas from neuroscience might help us understand the past better. I've been trying to learn about neuroscience through several different means. I began by reading the literature, both the scientific publications in the journal literature and also books that neuroscientists have been reading. Here in Munich I've been going to seminars and lectures. The most important thing that I've been doing here in Munich is to join one of the laboratories here and work with the scientists here. I've been working in the lab of Professor Ernst Puppel in the medical psychology department and at the Center for Human Sciences here at the LMU uh, and um, getting some first-hand experience in, in the methods and techniques of, of neuroscience. These images come from what are called fMRI experiments. fMRI is short for functional magnetic resonance imaging and it works roughly speaking by generating a very large strong magnetic field which adds energy to elements and molecules, atoms and molecules in the body and then when that magnetic field is relaxed those atoms and molecules release some of the energy that they picked up from the magnetic field and different substances release the energy at different rates which creates uh, contrast that a computer can use to generate pictures like this where you have lighter and darker areas. So the type of MRI that's usually used for uh, clinical use is often a snapshot where they just want to get a picture of what the uh, anatomy is looking like and look for things that might be wrong. These experiments use the same machine but um, take a series of snapshots over time so that you can measure changes. It's very common to have subjects look at certain pictures while they are in the MRI machine. Uh, it's also possible to have them listen to certain sounds, for example, and measure what the brain is doing. My interest is, uh, as an environmental historian, my interest is in how people have interacted with environments both how people have shaped environments and how environments have shaped human experience. And I'm interested in the range of environments from those that we would consider very wild to those that are highly built up as in large cities and everything in between. One of the things I really like about working with the people here and about the project that we've been discussing is the potential to have an impact on, on the world. There's been a uh, developing interest in the medical community in what's called healing environments or optimal healing environments. And that's used very broadly to include building architecture and the sorts of services that are available to patients and their families in a hospital. And one element that, that is talked about is the role of nature in hospital environments or rehabilitation facilities and that sort of thing. But there's um, room for a lot more research on what exactly is effective, what promotes health, and so uh, we are hoping that this research might, might help develop a, a better understanding of how we can design environments that, that promote everybody's well-being.